The universe is full of surprises, and sometimes they come in the form of dust. Dust grains are not just ordinary dust that you find on your furniture or in your vacuum cleaner. They are tiny solid particles that are made of different elements and have different shapes and sizes. Dust grains are everywhere in space, and they play a vital role in many cosmic phenomena. But how did dust grains form in the first place? And what can they tell us about the history and the future of the universe? In this episode, we will explore a new discovery made by James Webb of carbon-rich dust grains in the early universe, and how they defy our expectations and our models. We will also look at some of the other similar findings that Webb has made recently, and what they mean for our understanding of the cosmos. So join us as we uncover the secrets and mysteries of dust grains in the universe. Dust grains are tiny solid particles that form in the atmospheres of stars and are ejected into space when stars die. They are made of various elements, such as carbon, oxygen, silicon, iron, and so on. Dust grains play a crucial role in many astrophysical processes, such as star formation, planet formation, and the evolution of galaxies. They also affect how we observe the universe by scattering, absorbing, and emitting light. But where did dust grains come from in the first place? How did they form in the early universe when there were no stars or planets yet? These are some of the most puzzling questions in cosmology. According to our current models, dust grains should not have existed in large quantities in the first billion years of cosmic time because there was not enough time for stars to produce and disperse them. The only possible sources of dust grains in this epoch were the very first stars, called Population Three stars, which were massive, hot, and short-lived. However, these stars were so rare and far apart that they could not account for all the dust we see today. So how do we detect dust grains in the early universe? One way is to look at the light from distant galaxies that formed in this epoch. These galaxies are so far away that their light has been traveling for billions of years to reach us and therefore shows us what they looked like when they were young. By analyzing the spectrum of this light, we can infer how much dust there is in these galaxies and what kind of elements it contains. This is what Webb has been doing with its unprecedented sensitivity and resolution. Webb is part of a project called JADES, which stands for James Webb Space Telescope Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey. One of the main goals of JADES is to find and characterize dust grains in the early universe. And that's exactly what Webb has done. In a recent paper published in Nature Astronomy, a team of researchers led by Dr. Ryan Sanders from UC Davis reported the discovery of carbon-rich dust grains in a galaxy that formed when the universe was only 800 million years old. This is one of the oldest galaxies ever observed by Webb, and it shows a surprising amount of dust for its age. The researchers used NERSPEC to measure the spectrum of this galaxy, which is called JADES 3D1. They found that it has a strong emission feature at a wavelength of 6.2 micrometers, which corresponds to a type of dust grain called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs. PAHs are complex organic molecules that consist of rings of carbon atoms with hydrogen atoms attached to them. They are commonly found on Earth in sources such as coal, oil, and smoke. They are also abundant in space, especially in regions where stars are forming. The detection of PAHs in this galaxy is remarkable for several reasons. First, it implies that this galaxy has a lot of carbon in its dust grains, which is unusual for such an early epoch. Carbon is one of the elements that are produced by stars through nuclear fusion and then released into space when stars die. However, most stars take billions of years to do so, which means that there should not be much carbon available in the first billion years of cosmic time. Second, it suggests that this galaxy has a lot of star formation activity going on, which is necessary to create and heat up PAHs. However, most galaxies in this epoch are expected to be small and faint, with low rates of star formation. Third, it challenges our understanding of how PAHs form and survive in space. PAHs are fragile molecules that can be easily destroyed by ultraviolet radiation or shocks from supernova explosions. However, the observed galaxy seems to have enough PAHs to emit strongly at 6.2 micrometers. So how did this galaxy end up with so much carbon-rich dust in such a short time? 
and how did it manage to keep its PAH intact? These are the questions that baffled the astronomers who made this discovery. They proposed several possible scenarios, such as a merger of two galaxies, a burst of star formation triggered by gas inflows, or a different mechanism of dust formation that does not rely on stars. However, none of these scenarios can fully explain the observations, and more data is needed to test them. Jade's 3D1 is not the only galaxy that Webb has found to have unusual dust properties. In fact, Webb has made several other discoveries that reveal the diversity and complexity of dust grains in the universe. Here are some examples. In another paper published in Nature, a team of researchers led by Dr. Allison Kirkpatrick from the University of Kansas reported the discovery of spatial variations in PAH emission in a galaxy that formed when the universe was 1.5 billion years old. This galaxy, called Jade's 3D2, shows different levels of PAH emission in different regions, which indicates that the dust grains are not uniformly distributed or heated in this galaxy. The researchers used NERCAM to map the PAH emission across the galaxy and found that it is stronger in the outskirts than in the center. They also found that the PAH emission correlates with the presence of ionized gas and young stars, which suggests that star formation is more active and efficient in the outer regions of this galaxy. This is contrary to what we see in most galaxies today, where star formation is more concentrated in the center. The researchers speculated that this might be due to the influence of a massive black hole in the center of this galaxy, which could suppress star formation and dust heating by emitting powerful jets and winds. In yet another paper published in Nature Astronomy, a team of researchers led by Dr. Stephanie Malam from NASA Goddard Space Flight Center reported the detection of a crucial ingredient for life in the Orion Nebula, one of the closest and most famous star-forming regions in our galaxy. The ingredient is called methylcation, which is a simple organic molecule that consists of one carbon atom and three hydrogen atoms. Methylcation is important because it can react with other molecules to form more complex organic compounds, such as amino acids and sugars, which are essential for life as we know it. The researchers used NIRSPEC to measure the spectrum of the Orion Nebula and found that it has a distinctive emission feature at a wavelength of 5.8 micrometers, which corresponds to methylcation. This is the first time that methylcation has been detected in space with such high sensitivity and resolution. The researchers estimated that there are about 10 to the power of 15 grams of methylcation in the Orion Nebula, which is equivalent to the mass of 10 to the power of 9 elephants. They also found that methylcation is more abundant in regions where stars are forming, which implies that it is produced by chemical reactions involving dust grains and gas. These are just some of the amazing discoveries that Webb has made so far, and there are many more to come. Webb is revolutionizing our understanding of dust grains in the universe and how they affect the formation and evolution of stars, planets, and life. By observing dust grains with unprecedented detail and accuracy, Webb is revealing their secrets and their mysteries, and opening new windows into the unknown. Thank you for watching this episode, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos about Webb and its discoveries.